My name is Katie Lever, and I'm joined by Frank Marchese. He is the Chief Scientific Officer at Unistellar and a Senior Astronomer at the SETI Institute. Thank you for joining us, Frank. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm great. How about you? Good. Awesome. So um, a topic that instantly stuck out to me that you were talking about, aliens and citizen science. Let's talk about those. Uh, that's, that could be like a two-hour conversation. <laughs> that's all so right. Let's make it short. <laughs> uh, aliens. Um, one of the goals of astronomers and NASA astronomers everywhere in the world is to find life elsewhere. It's a very important research because we are not, that's one of the first questions you ask when you look at the stars, are we alone? So the SETI Institute, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, is an institute in Mountain View made of astronomers, engineers, uh, biologists, and we are looking for life. We're looking like for any type of life in the galaxy. Uh, for this, we build instruments, we develop different types of research. Right now, we are reaching a very interesting part, moment in the evolution of our species, our technology, because human, any, anybody, you, me, anybody who is not an astronomer can become a citizen astronomer, meaning that they can buy uh, instruments and do their own research and search for life or help the SETI Institute or other institution to look for, to search for life or to study the universe. So that's why I'm here today at South by Southwest. That's awesome. How does somebody become a citizen scientist? So you become a citizen scientist multiple ways. Uh, if you are, um, if you have patience, you can just go to Zoo Universe and look at uh, the various programs they have. They have a ton of programs for uh, for astronomy. Uh, one of them is to help the NASA test mission, which is a mission to look for exoplanets, and uh, you basically receive a lot of diagrams. And every time you see something that looks like an exoplanet, you click and uh, this goes to a data repository. And professional astronomers can use this later on to say, oh, this could be a planet. So in your house, in the evening, while watching Netflix or any other things, you can basically find exoplanets. And this is not science fiction. Uh, a few months ago, uh, they announced the discovery of a new exoplanet, TOI-872. And this exoplanet was discovered by citizen astronomers at home. Mm -hmm. um, you can also, if you have a telescope, participate to scientific programs, observe the sky, and uh, the Unistellar, uh, the company, I'm a chief scientific officer, can send alerts. If something happens in the sky, a new asteroid flies by in Earth that could potentially impact our planet, we send you a notification, you take your telescope out, you observe it, and that's help us to map the orbit and, it, and estimate whether or not it will impact our planet, the size of the asteroid, etc. Wow, that sounds awesome. Um, what else can you tell me about your work? Um, well, this is part of my work, of course, but uh, the other part is that we, as a as an SETI astronomer, I search for life, mm -hmm. so I design instruments to be able to detect uh, exoplanets like Earth. Uh, this is a very important task. We are trying to find what we call another pale blue dot, mm -hmm. a planet like Earth, a cousin of our own planet, uh, and we try to image it, to take an image of it. Uh, because when you take an image of an object, you get a lot of information, such as the, the orbit, the temperature, the composition of the atmosphere, and eventually you may be able to detect the presence of a life, like a microbiological life mm -hmm. or a technological life. Mm -hmm. So techno technological life will be, for instance, the detection of uh, signatures of uh, CFC or, sign or an increase of carbon dioxide which implies that there is an industry or there is a technological civilization on the planet. Or even see the city of a civilization on, uh, on this planet. So this is the kind of work we're doing at the moment. It's not science fiction anymore. It's truly happening. What's the most exciting thing you've found so far? Uh, in 2015, we find, we imaged the first exoplanet like Jupiter. Hmm. It's not super exciting because it's not an Earth-like exoplanet. But that was, we, for 10 years, we designed an instrument capable of doing this kind of research. Uh, the first flight of the instrument was in 2014. It's called the Gemini Planet Imager. It's in a, on the 8 meter class telescope in Chile. And we campaign, we use this instrument to observe like 250, 600 now stars. And we discover one planet like Jupiter. 
And now we have an image of this planet and we see this planet moving in orbit around the star called 51 Eridani, which is 100 light years away from us, so quite far. Mm -hmm. So that's, so I think that's one of the highlights of the last five years of my research. But of course, I also look for uh, moons around asteroids, mm -hmm. because asteroids now, we know now asteroids have moons. Um, and, and another part which is very interesting now is the fact that I'm using those citizen astronomers to do very interesting research. Um, in December, we observe a planet which is orbiting very close to its star. It has a very eccentric orbit. So every 100, 110 days, it will fly by this planet so close that it will basically burn down. And we call that a scorch planet. And uh, the reason it's interesting is because the James Webb Space Telescope, which has been launched recently, will observe this planet uh, as well in November. So we took data to confirm the existence of this planet and to confirm the timing of the observations. Mm -hmm. And is there anything that you're currently really excited about with your research? Uh, everything is exciting at the moment. <laughs> uh, what <good>. is, <laughs> no, the most exciting part is the fact that uh, today, yesterday I had a lunch with, a dinner with um, one of our citizen astronomers, mm. the one who participated to uh, this observation of this scorched planet. And um, yeah, and he told me, I, for 20 years, I've been waiting to be able to do some, some meaningful contribution to, uh, to science mm. and to, uh, to society at large. I mean, the guy is an entrepreneur, successful. He told me, I have this for money. But what I do for you guys, is for the science, for mm. the beauty, for the knowledge of humanity. Yeah. So I like hearing this. I think it's a, we are, do, we are changing the world. It's mm. not a big change, it's not a revolution, but we are changing it uh, by allowing people to contribute significantly to research. Mm. So that's the reason today we announce a new uh, call, campaign, called New Astronomy. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the idea is that now we have the technology to involve everybody in the field of research uh, and astronomy. Let's coordinate this. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that first everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, rich people in the Western nation, but across the world. Let's make sure that we diversify people who have access to this research and these tools to be able to do astronomy. The diversification is important because if you ask only astronomers to search for life, yeah. it's very likely we will not find it. Yeah. But if we ask everybody to be involved in this research, everybody to contribute, biologists, uh, people who have some kind of ideas about arts and so on, mm -hmm. they will bring some innovative ideas that we will be able to use later on. Mm -hmm. A musician can help finding life. Mm -hmm. A musician can help, uh, for instance, designing an instrument that make uh, is um, better to find, easier to find life. So those are the kind of ideas that we have at the moment. And the call for new astronomy has been released this morning, and I encourage everybody to uh, to go to our website to, to sign it. It's called newastronomy.space. Mm -hmm. And if you can read what we want to do, and if you want to join us, uh, sign it, and uh, we will keep you posted. That's great. Are there other ways that people can connect with you and get involved with your work? I'm also on this website mm -hmm. at All Planets. Mm -hmm. You can ask me questions there. I'm on Twitter as well. I'm on all social media, but uh, those are the two main ones I use at the moment. Great. And is there anything else that you'd like the audience to know about? No, so it was good talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Frank. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>